Oh, it is Travel Tuesday. Yeah. We are getting the travel feels. But somebody who recently got to travel and have an amazing experience mm. is Katlejo. He got to go to uh, Dubai, courtesy mm. of Expresso, and visit Dubai. Yeah, now we know that Dubai is very well known for its advanced technology and its incredible wealth. But Kat got the opportunity to experience the more traditional side of it, which we don't always see on postcards or even Instagram timelines. Have a look. Dubai is in every sense of the word an international city with only about 10 to 15 percent of the population being locals these days. However, Emirati culture is rich in history and it still remains the lifeblood of this modern metropolis. So today I'm here to visit the Sheikh Mohammed Center for Cultural Understanding to learn a little bit more about Emirati hospitality and to taste some of their delicacies. Fortunately, I came here hungry. We were there ready to just feast and have a lunch, but it was a lot more than that. We had a lady presenting to us, her name is Fatia, and she kind of took us through a brief history of, you know, what life was like back in those days and how a community or a household would live with their extended families. I learned that when you hold a cup of coffee in a certain way, when it's presented to you, that might mean a certain thing. We have a sign when we want more coffee. All what we have to do, we put our cup up like this. That means you want more. If you don't want any more, you shake it. So shake it means take it and when you make sure it's an empty cup. And if there's still some coffee and you don't want any more, you actually put your fist on top of the cup and pass it this way. We had a lovely spread of lunch. There was a chicken biryani, a vegetable biryani, various salads were there, there was a chicken stew and a vegetable stew and my ultimate favorite was the legamas, which is the dessert over here. These beautiful donut balls glazed with a date sauce. These donuts would just be soaking up that date sauce and you ate them. Ah, oh, they were absolutely delicious. They reminded me a little bit of like Maguena at home. But that entire experience of being at the Sheikh Mohammed Center for Cultural Understanding was really interesting, especially when you think about it in the context of this year being the year of tolerance in the UAE. So after a fantastic feast and learning about the cultural history of the Arabic people of this part of the land, now dressed in my traditional garb, I think I've certainly taken one step in understanding. Being on the Abra boats or the water taxis was pretty cool. For one, it's a short little trip across the creek for like one dirham per person <laughs> to the other side. Well, they say you shouldn't go swimming within 30 minutes after eating, but Abra boats like these have been ferrying people safely across the Dubai Creek for centuries. So I think I'm in pretty good hands. When you're sitting in that Abra for all of the five minutes that it takes you to get across, you get a sense of what it was like back in old Dubai days when these boats would be transporting people back and forth in between two souks or markets that were kind of the primary starting point of the trade via the spice route to get to their destinations. They would travel through this creek and this would be a stopover point for them. So it, it's a wonderful thing to experience because how many times do we really actually get to think about the past and possibly live in it for a short amount of time? Traditional markets, or souks as they're known in this part of the Arab world, are a window into the old way of life where traders and vendors from the east would bring their wares and showcase them to the public. Textiles, jewelry, perfume and all kinds of trinkets, they have them all. Going to Al Faidi souk is mad. A crazy experience in the sense that there's so much energy going back and forth. There's these guys at the shops that are just always trying to like just get you to buy something and like they call you by cool names. They're like, hey, Baraka. Barack Obama. Hey, Tate Diggs. I think somebody might have called me Will Smith. Hey. And you know, it's very innovative, creative businessmen that are trying to get their, their, their goods traded. This is frankincense, yeah, and this is the myrrh. You know, one of the three wise men, frankincense and Frankincense myrrh. and myrrh. Yeah, and the gold, so the gold is left. Well, if you are looking for an overload of opulence, then look no further than the gold souk or the gold market, where just looking down the street, left to right, top to bottom, there's just an overflow of precious metals, silvers, golds, diamonds, and other gems. Best to leave the missus at home for this one. 
that's how it was back in the day. You still get that sense that that, that is how it is because you can still bargain you know, to get the best price. Hacking a good deal in these kinds of markets is an essential quality or skill to have. Of course I was able to barter. What are you talking about? I was there. How much for this? This just for you is uh, 35 dirham. But tourist price is like 65, 70. Ah, but you know, I'm not a tourist. I'm a brother. Don't you, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, brother. oh, that was the line. Ah, got him right there. Okay, three. best friend. 25, man. Guess the skills are intact, man. So just get your lingo on, get friendly with the people, and who knows what you could get away with and come home with from these wonderful traditional markets. I shook the guy's hand and he was just very appreciative of the fact that I firstly stopped at his store and I bought stuff from his store and he was interested to know where I was from. Yeah, I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. Mandela country.